Many people are being so bound up and, and deceived and blocked from the true identity of who they are. So they walk into deceptions and the entanglements and affairs of this world. They look for fulfillment in everything but God's presence. Everyone say, I came from God's presence. My fulfillment is not in work, success, victory, failures, relationships, money, or anything of this world. My fulfillment is in his presence. And only in his presence. See, nothing changes until you confess it. Does everybody get it? Yes. Not, so if you didn't confess it, it don't come. See, so the enemy tries to put a guard over your mouth or distract you so you don't cooperate with the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God has a voice. He is the voice. He is the voice of God. He brings everything. Nothing is done without the Spirit of God. That's why the second chamber of the tabernacle is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So that you are born again. Born again. There's a difference between being saved and born again. We want to walk in that state of being and being born again. Where it's no longer we that live but hidden that lives. Why? Because then Christ looks for him in us. He's looking for him in each and every one of us. So there's something that must be established. It's called integrity. And there is a key to integrity by God. Romans chapter 8. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 8 and verse 1. We're going to speak this so we sow. Because what you sow is what you reap. And what you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. Verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's wonderful. But he says, okay, now here's the reality of it. Who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But I'm a believer, but if you're walking according to the flesh, condemnation will come. Does everybody get it? It's real simple. Verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life does what? In Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement. Everyone say righteous requirement. So there is a requirement. It's not a wicked requirement. It's a righteous requirement. So he's talking about two laws. And where there's two laws, there's two integrities. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Verse 5, speak it. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds. They set their what? Their minds. They set their minds. They set their heart. They set their spirit on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the natural mind, is enmity against God. For it cannot be subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. And your carnal mind is always going to be against God. It cannot be converted. Has everybody got it? It can't be converted. It's called the old man. When it says the carnal mind, that's the old man. The flesh is now your old man. It's the old one. It's the offspring of Satan. It was born in darkness, blinded, hates God, is rebellious towards God, will not submit to God and never will submit to God. The only thing it can do is be killed. So it stays crucified as we are led by the Spirit. 
Amen? Let's go a little further. In verse 8, so then those who are what? In the flesh cannot what? Cannot please God. So we're either walking according to the flesh or according to the spirit. So there's the integrity of the wicked or the integrity of the righteous. Amen? Now, integrity of the righteous is associated with a quality of being honest. There's a quality of being honest. Honest. And that is honest. Now, there's two other things attached to this. It's called righteous, righteous motives that please God. Righteous motives that please God. There are strong moral principles of righteous motives. Why? Because your desire is to please God. If you do not have a desire to please God, there won't be a walk of integrity. Not a, that pleases God. Now, the integrity of the wicked is their own quality of being dishonest. Has everybody got it? That's the integrity of the wicked. They are dishonest. They are selfish. Their motives that do not please God, they set their minds on the things of the world and not the things of the Spirit. They are prideful and arrogant. And all the works they do, they give themselves glory and not God. Amen. In Romans 7. So you and I are either setting our minds on the things of eternal or temporary. In verse 21. Would you speak it with me? I find then a what? A law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind or my spirit and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my, the mind, my spirit, I myself serve the what? Law of God. But with the flesh, the law of the sin. So there's a law. It's an evil presence that's of the flesh or a law of the spirit of God. What I serve is what I believe. So if I set my mind on the things of the world, I'm going to serve the things of the world. If I set my mind on the things of the flesh, in other words, my focus, the direction of my heart. In Proverbs 10, there is a key to integrity, which we'll talk about in a second. Proverbs chapter 10. In other words, we must ask ourselves, am I kingdom-minded or am I carnal-minded? Am I laboring unto the Lord or myself? Do I labor just to get possessions? Or do I labor to please God, knowing that He is the source of all things? Do I acknowledge Him in everything that I do? Is He always before me? Or do I put Him aside so I can do my will, not His? And then I go to Him after. People make decisions before going to God. That's false integrity. Proverbs 10 and verse 8. Would you speak it with me? The wise in heart will receive what? Commands. But a prating fool will what? Fall. He who walks with integrity walks what? Securely immovable. But he who perverts his ways will become known. It's always exposed. Does everybody see that? Walks with Integrity is walking what? Securely. is immovable. You can't move that person. Not at all. In Proverbs 11, in verse 1. Dishonest what? Scales are an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight. 
When pride comes in, comes shame. But with the humble is what? Wisdom. The integrity of the upright will what? Guide him. But the perversity of the unfaithful will what? Destroy him. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. You can't buy your way out. Nobody buys their way out of judgment. But the righteousness, what? Delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The, the righteousness of the upright will deliver him, but the unfaithful will be caught in their lust. Upright is an integrity that will guide them. It's called righteous integrity. In Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19 and verse 1. And speak it better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge and his sins will hasten with his feet. The foolish man, the foolishness of a man twists his way and his heart frets against the Lord. We see this integrity rejects, righteous integrity rejects perverseness. It doesn't associate with it. It wants to keep clean. It is a guide. There is this integrity. Now what is behind integrity is motive and intent. Always motive and intent. That will allow you to know where your integrity is. There are immoral acts that occur in the carnal realm. The Bible says something very profound. Depart from evil. Depart from evil. What's that for? So to maintain your integrity. Again, your integrity is the express character of Christ Jesus. Not the express character of yourself, your old man. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Would you read it? Most men will... Proclaim each his own goodness. But who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. Even when they're brats, they're still going to get blessed because of the integrity of the parents. A king who sits on the throne of judgment scatters all evil with his what? Eyes. See, there's an area where you and I get to where we're able to see through things. When that integrity is there, you see through. You can sense, you know people's motives and even intents. You know. Why? Because you know them by their fruit and you're able to discern the spirits influencing them. That's only if you're able to maintain Christ's character. That's where the integrity is, isn't it? Proverbs 28. In verse 5. What does it say? Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all. Now, people can seek the Lord, but I'm going to tell you something. If they're not hearing, it's not establishing. Better is the poor who walks in his own integrity than one who perverse in his ways, though he be what? Rich. In other words, you can't buy your way out. Whoever keeps the law is a discerning son, but a companion of glutton shames his father. You know, money can't buy integrity. <laughs> it's where you and I are able to discern not only good and evil, but what pleases God? We should be living a life that pleases God in everything we do, in every decision, especially in our motives and attitudes or intents. In Psalm 7, 
Psalm chapter 7. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. Let's speak it together. The Lord shall what? Judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just for the righteous God. Test the hearts of and minds, my defenses of God who saves the upright in heart. He judges according to integrity. Now, let me explain something very important because what is attached to integrity is your motives and intent. Do you know we're actually going to be judged by our intents? People are all going to be judged by my sin. No, you're going to be judged by your intent. See, people don't realize that this intent, there's a mode, integrity associated with a motive and intent. Your motive is your emotional desire. Everyone say, my motive is my emotional desire. My intent is the plan to fulfill it. Does everybody got it? My emotion, I mean, my motive is the, my emotional desire. My intent is the plan to fulfill it. So does God know your motive? Does he know your intent? Will it affect your integrity? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, some people don't even know their motive or their intent. And they try to maintain their own integrity in the, in the flesh, and you can't. You cannot contain Christ's character in the flesh. It's impossible. This is where you and I yield all the time. We yield to him. We surrender to him. We allow him to take over. My prayer every single day is, Lord, possess me. Possess me. I want to be possessed by you. Not by anything else. Is everybody okay? Psalm 25. What's your motive? Emotional desire. What's your intent? The plan to fulfill it. All glory. In verse 12. Psalm 25 and verse 12. Let's speak it. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in what? In prosperity. And his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secrets of the Lord is with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. He shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me. For I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look my, on my affliction and my pain and forgive my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you redeem Israel, O God, out of their troubles. Righteous integrity carries the utmost respect, honor, and reverence to God. It is the utmost. That is called the fear of the Lord. The key to integrity, are you ready for this? Is responsibility. Now, let me explain about this. The key to integrity is responsibility. It is the ability to respond to the voice of the Lord. That's this responsibility I'm talking about. It is the ability to respond to the voice of the Lord and his commands. That is the key to integrity. Because if you can't hear, you can't do. Is everybody okay? 
This is a responsibility that every believer should have. And too many people, you know, you know how many people are not responsible? Think of when we were out in the world, we were irresponsible. The only thing we were responsible for is when we got money for it. Or there was a lust or pleasure according to the flesh. We made sure we went to work. Hello? We made sure all of these other things were up cap for selfish gain. And that's all it was producing was a false integrity, which was producing a, right, uh, a wicked integrity. So in this, there's that area where we want to please God. If there's not a desire to please God in everything we do, every decision, Lord, is this decision pleasing you? Is what I'm saying pleasing you? Is what I'm thinking pleasing you? Is my intent, again, most people don't even check their intents. What's my motive? What's the emotional desire that I have? Is that pleasing you? Because if I don't check that first, then the intent's going to begin to unfold. And then the fruits will come. And then many people fall into many traps. Amen? So it's our responsibility. That responsibility, it is a key to integrity. It's called responsibility. And what is that? It is the ability to respond to the voice of the Lord. Because, and what? Hear his commands. Without that, an integrity cannot be established. Or then we walk in what we call presumptuous. And there is called presumptuous sin. Then we walk in assuming. Well, I, 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 I hope, I believe, it could be, maybe, I don't know. You know, there's a difference of knowing and not knowing. There's a difference of guess and knowing. Amen? I want to share this again. The key to integrity is the ability to respond to the voice of God and his commands. Because if that's not established, it's very difficult to maintain the integrity of Christ. Amen? Psalm 26. Listen, God, Jesus is looking for Jesus, right? In verse 1, what does it say? Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. Do you know that he cannot ask for vindication unless he's walking in the integrity? There are places you and I don't even have a right to ask unless we're walking right. People are asking and wondering why they don't get an answer. Because they're not walking according to the integrity of Christ. And then they have a, a hope, and their hope is really not for pleasing God. Their hope is really for fulfilling their own lust, their, their own flesh. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not, what? Slip, read it. Come on, read it with me. Verse 2. Examine me. Whoa, hallelujah. O Lord, and what? Prove me. Try my mind or my spirit and my heart for your loving kindness before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with idolatrous mortals. Do you understand that he saw himself, it didn't mean better, but above. No longer ordinary, but extraordinary. No, no longer temporary, but eternal. There's a difference. Again, remember we talked about the three levels. There's a three levels of commitment. He said to overcome. Those three levels, he said what they overcame, the enemy by the what? Word of their testimony, the blood of the Lamb, and did not love their lives to death. Too many people are still fighting for their life. I have not sat with adulterous mortals, nor will I go in with the hypocrites or bigots. Same thing. I have hated the assembly of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence. So I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may, that I may proclaim the what? With the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wonders, 
wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Oh, man, that's phenomenal. Why? Because God's presence was the most important thing to him. And he could not ask unless he had walked in his integrity. Amen? Your integrity will determine your path. Amen. Does everybody understand that? It also will determine your answered prayer, whether it's answered or not. You can't ask for something without righteous integrity. The only thing you can ask for is have mercy and forgive me. <laughs> Amen? Psalm 41. That's why it's so important about being filled with the Spirit of God all the time. That's why it's so important to eat the Word, to strengthen your spirit. That's why it's so important. You know, the Lord just gave us three abides. Abide in prayer, praise, worship, amen, assembling. In Psalm 41, is everybody there? In verse 10. Let's speak it. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you are well pleased with me because my enemies do not triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. In other words, he said, look at my, because I'm walking right with you, I'm in divine position. I'm holding the integrity of Christ. So if I'm in divine position, I'm walking with divine character. I'm walking in divine power. And I'm also walking in divine favor. Amen? Divine favor. So one of the things the enemy always wants to do is get you out of position. And he does that by, it's like, you know, false, false desires. He loves to plant the seed. That motive, emotional desire to try and sway someone or move them out of position. His job is to come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He can't do that. He can't touch you when you're in position. But he can sure try to sway you to get out of position. Amen? James chapter 1, verse 12. The integrity of the upright is totally different than the integrity of the wicked. And you will know them by their fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I've always learned about Christ's character is there's that area where going the extra mile. There's not a limitation of righteousness there's not a limitation of help there's not a limitation it's going the extra mile always i'll never forget when the lord tested me on that going the extra mile are you willing to go the extra mile why because he had to go the extra mile it said three times he went to go pray jesus died in the garden he had to die to himself so he could die on the cross amen, amen? that's the only reason why we're here he reached the third level. And he expects us to reach the third level and walk in that integrity and, and come out from a world, come out from among them and be separate. That he may be a father to us. Amen? A father. That we may be his sons and his daughters. In James chapter 1, is everybody there? In verse 12, let's speak it together. Blessed is the man who what? Endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his what? Own desires. What are those called? 
Those are what? Motives. It's an emotional desire. So the enemy is going to try to plant in me and you a desire. And that emotional desire is associated with a motive. So he's going to be drawn away by his desires and enticed. Then when the desire has conceived, that means now there's an intent. Has everybody got it? That the plan to fulfill that emotion of desire is beginning to unfold. It gives birth to sin, the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Because the wages of sin is death. Do not be what? Do not be what? Do not be what? Deceived. Deceive. My beloved brethren, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Be what? What is the key to integrity? Hear the voice of the Lord. Does everybody got it? And do his commands. That's the key to integrity. See, that key, doesn't it lock and unlock? Amen. So when you're walking in God's integrity and the righteous integrity, upright integrity, you are able to lock yourself out from the flesh and lock yourself into the spirit. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Swift to hear and slow to speak. People speak without hearing. And slow to what? Wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Hmm. Let's go a little further. I like this. And be what? Doers of the word and not only hearers, only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, wait a minute, isn't that the same thing? Wait, what's the key to integrity? To hear what? The voice of the Lord and his commands. So when you're hearing his commands, is he saying do? Yes. Yeah. Mm. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Righteous integrity holds the keys to lock the flesh and then actually unlock the will of Christ. So it's released. The key is to hear his voice and discern motive and intent. Again, motive is emotional desire. Intent is the plan to fulfill it. Amen? So that you and I are able to discern what is promoting, what's promoting, what's influencing us. We go back to who told me that and where did you come from? Where did that feeling come from? Remember, every thought has a voice, every voice has a presence, and every presence has a Motive and intent, amen, which releases a image and a emotion. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Let's speak it. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if, that means cooperation. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give your life to what? your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out what? Abba, Father, which means Daddy. That's relationship. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And what? And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Christ's integrity, his spirit, that means that we must yield to the character. Then we become dead to self. Amen? We're dead to self. We're dead to sin in the flesh. And we allow the spirit to become the righteous integrity. We are joint heirs. You know, God's, the, the Lord wants me and you to be the salt Amen? And the light of the world. We're to what? Shine. Amen? Shine. Shine his glory. Shine his presence. Shine his will. Shine his love. Shine his compassion. And shine his boldness. Don't take no garbage from no devil. Oh, hallelujah. Again, when there, you know, I had this vision... In fact, it came Friday night, and I wanted to share it, but I wasn't led to. And uh, everything is about being unplugged from the world. You know, in the movie Matrix, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Matrix. But in the beginning of the, in the movie, when he begins to get unplugged, next thing he finds himself, he's pulling this thing out of his mouth. Because you know? he was never able to speak. Amen? He was never able to use his tongue. And, and so many people still have a tube in their mouth. Because they're not speaking God's word. The only thing they speak is puke. Amen. Some people need to get unplugged. Amen. And as he got unplugged from here, and he sat up, next thing you know, all of these things were plugged and it started popping off. Pow, pow. Each one of them had a label. Lust, fear, anxiety, stress. Anger, hatred, all of these things. If you notice they were there plugged, they were plugged into his body. And then the final plug that had to be unplugged was that which was plugged into his brain, his mind, his thoughts. See, we need to get unplugged completely. So, so many people are still connected to the world. They're not completely unplugged yet. There's multiple plugs. We want to cut loose from every plug so there is no feeding to your spirit or your soul from the world. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We want to be unplugged from the world and plugged to e into eternity, responding to his voice and commands, producing righteous integrity in us and through us that Christ can be seen because the world is looking for something, and they don't even know. And the devil is offering them all kinds of things. 1 John chapter 4. I'm telling you, I talk to many people who proclaim to be believers, and I see many plugs on them. All glory. The key to integrity is to hear the voice of God and do his commands. Amen? It's called responsibility. It's amazing how we're more responsible to the things of the world than we are to the things of God. We got to be about kingdom business and maintain that integrity. Everybody will stand before God, won't we? Well, you know what? We stand before him every minute. People who don't realize that don't have relationship. They think they're going to wait to go home and stand before him. Nope. You stand before him every second of every day. It's called the book of remembrance. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. Let's read it. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. 
And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into this flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who does, is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Titus chapter 2. Oh, glory. Titus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Titus 2. Starting at verse 1, please. But as for you, speak things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, tempered, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women, likewise, that they are reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands and to their children, love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be what? Ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you, Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not proliferating, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify himself, his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority, and let no one despise you. I'd say that's pretty bold. Let's close at Second Timothy or Second, yeah, Second Timothy four. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter four. Learn it, eat it, teach it, preach it, give it. Amen. Amen. Don't go home and put it on the shelf. Amen. Verse one. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out. <laughs> Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Has that happened? Oh, you betcha. There's a great falling away going on. But, of course, there's a revival also. But according to their own what? Desires. Emotional desires are called motives. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Why? Because the intent wants to unfold. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be what? Watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your calling or your ministry. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that has been imparted in us be protected by the blood of Christ and grow and bear fruit for your glory as we prepare our hearts for communion. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. <laughs>